You ever wonder what hard drive to buy? Can you get numbers? Can you get information? Let's check it out. Hey there, this is Tom's, Tom's Tech Show. I do, I have to be careful because I do have another channel called Tom's Talk Show where I talk about some more hard hitting things, politics and things like that. Um, so if you want to dig into some stuff like that, then head on over to Tom's Talk Show on YouTube and uh, we can get into that for sure. Uh, but today we're, you know, I was going to do a video on something backing up <laughs> Backblaze, but that kind of broke down because I ended up on uh, this drive chart that Backblaze has that just, uh, it's it's too much information to include in another video. So I just said, well, let's just add it to this video. So create its own video is what I'm saying. So I often I'm wondering what, you know, what drive, what hard drive to buy. I need to replace a drive, need to get a new drive. Do I just go buy whatever's cheap? Do, you know, what do I do? So I, I've i known for a while that uh, Backblaze um, publishes their data on their drive performance. So, I mean, my number of drives that I have, I think in my studio, I have a computer here, I've got four or five drives. Uh, I got a couple of laptops that have some drives in it. My NAS has eight drives in it. So... How do I know? That's not a very good volume for getting statistics about drive failures and what kind of drives should I be buying and how long they should last and all of that. So over on Backblaze's site, they have a page that's dedicated to hard drive data and statistics. So and they've been doing this since 2013. Um, I think they even had some before that, but um, it wasn't as official. So right now, Backblaze has 190,000 drives. So that to me is a pretty good sampling. I think that if they've got data on that, I would want to know that. So here we go. Here's the hard drive reliability annualized hard drive failure rates. So what are the, who's failing, right? So their drive failures, I mean, it's a, it's a storage company, so they have obviously large dynamic RAID arrays that they can move drives in and out of all the time, and they get reports on what fails so that they can go switch out drives, and then they you know will buy lots in drives because they know they're going to fail, so you want a you know, certain lot of number of drives to be able to replace these. Um, and they'll publish the information here. So let's look at the Backblaze hard drive stats for quarter three, 2021. Okay, so let's come down to, there's a chart here. Okay, so we've got this chart and it's got a lot of data on it. So the we have the uh, model here, HGST, Seagate, Toshiba, and Western Digital are the ones that they're using. Um, and they give us the model number, so that's nice. So if we want to go buy the exact same model, we can. Uh, we got the drive size, how many drives they have, the average age in months. So how long has this drive been spinning? And the number of drive failures and the average failure rate. So my, my thinking is, you know, one thing that I look at is do... Uh, larger drives fail more often than smaller drives, but right? if you've got a four terabyte drive, how, you know, that's less dense data on the drive. How is that going to compare to like uh, eight or 12 terabyte drive? The more compact the data, I would think maybe the more errors, the more problems you would have. So here in the HGST, they have two different sets of four terabyte drives that they purchased. Um, they're well, the first set, which is a, just a little bit older, uh, smaller lot, 0.48% failure rate. And the uh, four terabyte, the second set of them had 0.19 failure rate. Well, if we go down to the 12 terabyte models, uh, they have 10,000 of those. So that's a pretty good lot, pretty good mix. 14 have, have failed, so that's 0.51. So definitely more failures than, than the regular four terabyte drive. So, okay, 
So maybe making a decision I would want to buy more smaller drives, you know, than larger drives. Okay, maybe. <laughs> so the Seagate 4 terabyte drive is a failure rate of 1.84%, way higher than the others. But the Seagate, you know, 16 terabyte drives is 1.16. So it's about the same. It's actually less. There is a group here that they bought a 14 terabytes that has a 6.29 failure rate. So this lot here is a little bit different product number. So maybe it's a, you know, a little bit different lot than the other one. And I don't know if maybe they're, you know, there's different, there's several different numbers of 12 terabyte drives and 10, eight terabyte drives. I don't know if, you know, they were taking, you know, a 12 terabyte drive and not changing anything, but manipulating the mechanics in it a little bit to squeeze a little bit more data out of it instead of like redesigning the platters or adding a platter or anything like that. So, you know, I think if they're trying to squeeze more data out in a smaller platter size, then maybe you'll get, you know, there are problems where more of them will fail rather than going back and redesign, okay, we're gonna add another platter to the drive to increase the space, right? So some of these things we don't know, but here in this chart, you can kind of see, there's some things like uh, this 10 terabyte drive has a 2.98 failure rate and the 12 has a 5.6 failure rate. Could they have done that? Sure. And, you know, manipulated that because then down here, this next model down here has a 1.31 and then the next one has a 0.73. So is this, you know, like I'm saying, is, is Seagate to push out a 12 terabyte drive, they take a 10 and try and cram more data. And then later on they go, well, we really need to, you know, make add another platter to make it work better. And that kind of, you know, you can see kind of these little, this data, you know, in these little charts and stuff and how this stuff flows out. So. They'll give you the, the Automate 5 models that recorded one drive failure during the quarter. Uh, what's new? They added 16 terabyte drives that quarter. Okay. So uh, our HDDs versus SSDs. As a reminder, we use both SSDs and standard spinny hard drives as boot drives in our storage servers. The workload for a boot drive includes regular reading, writing, deleting log files, typically along with booting the server when needed. In short, the workload for each drive type is similar. Our recent post, are SSDs really more reliable on hard drives? We compare failure rates of our hard drives to SSDs using data through Q2 2021. So here they even show this uh, hard drive time, uh, average failure rate and SSD lifetime average failure rate. So once they started using uh, SSDs, the failure rate was much less than hard drives. So are they going to start using more SSDs? Uh, I don't know. That's typically for like boot stuff to keep the operating system and stuff running and probably data caching, things like that. So uh, since this is kind of, you know, like cold storage, you don't want to put expensive uh, SSDs into that. You still want to have uh, you know, regular, you know, spinning drives. So um, here's the Backblaze hard drive lifetime annualized failure rate. So this is over the lifetime of all of these, you know, different types of drives uh, from reporting period 4-20-2013 through 9-30-2021. So this is going to give you a huge amount of of time as to what, really I mean, you can take a small snapshot of a few months or you know what how drives are doing but really you want a long haul you want a huge you want a huge number of drives and you want a huge amount of time so this is almost getting close to a decade of reporting these uh, uh drive numbers and their failure rates and stuff so now we're down here like a western digital 14 terabyte has you know 0.3 to 0 0.6, a 0.4 annual failure rate. So that's, you know, pretty good. Uh, some of the ones like the Seagate 14 terabyte, for whatever reason, has a 
a lot of those things failed. So you know, it's like you want to stay away from those. You know, so this really is very helpful for going over drives and what drive you would want to buy for your own computer if you're getting a spinning drive. So yeah. All right, there you go. That's one thing I always check for on spinning drives and uh, what's going on. I mean, you never know whether there's going to be, you know, a certain manufacturer is going to change a technology and then start um, having failures, you know, like having a burst of failures for a while till they figure the technology, figure it out and then, uh, you know, make it better. Like I think they were using helium for a while inside the drive and, and different things like that, farming with different gases and air type materials in, inside the drive for heat and how close the heads could reach, you know, to that platter and stuff without actually touching as it's, as it's flying across all kinds of stuff, different diaphragms that, that move the heads around. It's a, you know, like a voice coil kind of thing that moves the heads around stepper motor kind of thing. So it's, you know, it's, very interesting you know what the different things about hard drives you know over the years i remember i had two little like 40 megabyte seagate drives and one of them would only work when it was sitting upside down so i'd have to turn it turn it you know i'd have them sitting next to each other and then I'd, one of them would stop and i'd have to turn it upside down and then it would you'd hear it spin back up again and i'd continue working and i thought that was normal <laughs> Oh boy, those were the days. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching this. Uh, if this data helps you, then uh, go ahead and comment and like and share and subscribe to this video so everybody else knows where to get your data, hard drive data information from. All right. There you go. Thanks for watching. Take care.